artificial intelligence is already changing every aspect of our daily lives. You might not be fully aware of it, but one way or another, you are benefiting from AI technologies in your day-to-day -day activities. When you search something on the internet, or purchase a product that is recommended to you by your favorite shopping site, even when you're just taking a picture using your smartphone, or by simply watching this video and play the next video that is recommended to you by YouTube, you are definitely gaining from the power of artificial intelligence in its numerous amazing ways used in our daily task. Although the application of artificial intelligence is all around us, most people are still very unfamiliar with this concept. Many would still think that AI is just some sort of a futuristic idea that they've only seen in science fiction movies. But in reality, we've been using AI for years, and it has been integrated deeply and are deployed in lots of areas of our society. You can see its application in healthcare, transportation, economics and business, education, communication and media, and so on. In this course, you'll understand artificial intelligence, or AI, in a much deeper perspective. You'll appreciate how this concept has originated and how it evolved over time. You'll understand what machine learning is and how it drives our modern-day artificial intelligence. Moreover, we'll explore the different types of machine learning algorithms and we'll dive a little deeper by writing codes and applying these algorithms in various use cases using one of the most popular and open source programming languages, Python. At the end of this course, you should have a good understanding of AI and be able to start building your own machine learning models that you can incorporate in your future projects. Hi, my name is Joe Edgo, and welcome to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Foundations course. The concept of intelligent machines that can behave and think like humans has been reflected in numerous records since antiquity. But the term artificial intelligence only started in the mid-1950s when one of the greatest innovators in the field of computer science and considered to be the father of artificial intelligence, John McCarthy, coined the term artificial intelligence in his 1956 research conference in search for academic funding. His research proposal stated that an attempt will be made to find how to make machines use language, form abstraction and concepts, solve kind of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. This was a very brave and overconfident statement by John McCarthy. In this conference, the word artificial intelligence was first used, and he defined it as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. McCarthy is so convinced that he could get the machines to think. There, he established the objectives that he would pursue throughout his career. He articulated all those years that the speeds and memory capacities of present computers may be insufficient to simulate many of the higher functions of the human brain, but the major obstacle is not lack of machine capacity, but our inability to write programs, taking full advantage of what we have. However, despite his efforts, McCarthy did not achieve his true objective during his time, a machine that would pass the Turing test. Turing test is a method of determining whether a machine can demonstrate human intelligence. If a machine can engage in a conversation with a human without being detected as a machine, then it has demonstrated human intelligence. This concept was proposed in a paper published in 1950 by a mathematician, logician, cryptoanalyst, and computing pioneer Alan Turing, and it has become a fundamental motivator in the theory and development of artificial intelligence. Although McCarthy did not really achieve his research objective, but there are many great things that can be attributed to him during his era. He invented Lisp, the second oldest high-level programming language that exists. He also gave the idea of computer time sharing, known as utility computing, he devised a theory of a super central computer to which many people could connect at once, 
and it was one of the pillars of the future creation of the internet and cloud computing. Note that he conceptualized this during early days in which the personal computer seemed science fiction. In today's time, intelligent machine is considered to be any system that exhibits behavior that could be interpreted as human intelligence. But for us to build something that we can consider intelligent, we must first evaluate and have a deeper understanding of what human intelligence truly is. So let me ask you first, how would you define intelligence? Even for a very simple word, defining and classifying the word intelligence is extremely complicated. For decades, the concept of intelligence has been a widely debated topic among members of the psychology community, and no one standard definition for this so far. As of now, it has been defined in many ways such as the ability to learn, higher level abilities include abstract reasoning, mental perception, problem solving, and decision making. Intelligence is not just limited to that. It covers emotional knowledge, creativity, as well as the adaptation to meet the demands of the environment effectively. The early focus of artificial intelligence in the 1950s is to create a machine that simulates human-level intelligence. This is called Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. It is also known as Strong AI. This is similar to the ones you see in most science fiction movies, where a hypothetical machine capable of performing any intellectual task and behave similar to humans. In theory, basically anything a human can do, a strong AI can do as well. This is the idea where many of our leading experts in AI is trying to achieve for decades. But unfortunately, it is extremely difficult if not impossible to achieve. At least with the current limitation of computing power that we have or our lack of complete understanding on how the human brain works, or, as McCarthy said, our inability to write programs that take full advantage of what we have. As of now, strong AI only exists in theory. So, don't expect to see anytime soon that a humanoid robot possessing superhuman intelligence that threatens the existence of humanity. It only exists in science fiction movies. In today's time, the focus of artificial intelligence is concerned with systems that can perform specific tasks. This is known as weak AI or narrow AI. Narrow AI is a type of artificial intelligence that is limited only to a specific or narrow task. Narrow or weak AI also simulates human cognition but only implements limited part of the human mind. At the present, artificial intelligence is mostly about artificial neural networks and deep learning as you might have heard. Several applications include virtual assistant, self-driving car, facial recognition, and a lot more. We'll get into this in some later topics. But first, you must know that for several decades, since the mid-1950s up to the late 1980s, AI systems are implemented using symbolic reasoning. This is also known as good old-fashioned AI or GoFi. The term classical AI or rule-based AI are also used interchangeably as well. This approach used in symbolic AI is based on the assumption that many aspects of intelligence can be achieved by the manipulation of symbols. This is an assumption defined as the physical symbol systems hypothesis by Alan Newell and Herbert Simon in the mid-1960s, exhibited by their computer program called the General Problem Solver. It was the first computer program which separated its knowledge of the problems, rules represented as input data, from its strategy of how to solve problems, a generic solver engine. So just to clarify, machines don't think like humans do. But for it to simulate thinking, it needs a way to represent and manipulate knowledge. One way of representing knowledge is in a form of rules. Rule-based systems represent knowledge in terms of set of rules that mimic the reasoning of human expert. 
rules connect symbols in a relationship similar to an if-then statement. One popular form of symbolic AI is expert systems, the simplest form of artificial intelligence. An oversimplified example of a rule-based expert system is the automated teller machine or ATM. The machine performs the action of an expert in a particular domain, say a bank teller, who would perform accordingly when faced with a client to do banking transactions. For example, in an ATM withdrawal transaction, a fact that client 1 has a remaining balance of 5,000 is matched to a rule that if a client enters an amount less than or equal to the remaining balance, then dispense the money. But for most of us, we no longer consider this example as an AI system because there's nothing new to it. And that's the problem when defining artificial intelligence. It's like a moving target. Its definition changes over time. Once it has been done, no one calls it AI anymore. One good example of expert system in the field of medicine developed during the 1970s was the mycin expert system. It was used to identify bacteria causing severe infections, and then the system would recommend antibiotics with the dosage adjusted for patients' body weight. It was also used for the diagnosis of blood clotting diseases. The mycin expert system operated using a fairly simple inference engine and a knowledge base of approximately 600 rules using LISP programming language. Symbolic AI programs are based on creating explicit structures and behavior rules using an if-then statements. In a rules-based system, the inference engine iterates in a given set of rules and then tries to find a match in its working memory. The working memory consists of all the facts the system currently knows about the situation. Symbolic AI is very convenient for settings where the rules are very clear. In fact, rule-based systems still account for most computer programs as of today. And many leading computer scientists believe that symbolic reasoning will continue to remain a very important component of artificial intelligence. Today, a common example of symbolic AI tool is object-oriented programming. OOP languages like C++ and Java allow you to define classes, specify their properties, and organize them in hierarchies. You can create instances of these classes called objects, and it can perform actions through its methods. Each method executes a series of rule-based instructions that might read and change the properties of the current object or other objects. Using OOP, you can create extensive and complex symbolic AI programs that perform various tasks. Although the main advantage of rules-based systems is that they are relatively easy to understand, transparent, and can be built to represent the domain expert judgment, but rules-based systems have some critical limitations. First is scalability. Rules are added and are not learned by the system. Therefore, simple rules can become very complex that lead to potential overlapping of rules, making it harder to understand and maintain. Second is that it cannot handle incomplete information very well, meaning for data that do not have an associated rule, then this data will be ignored. Third is, if the rule has many, many different considerations, variables that come into play, it will be very hard to write a single rule that captures everything. Rules-based system cannot simply handle the complexities and uncertainties of the world. For instance, consider computer vision, where a computer can make sense of the content of an image or video, Say, I want to create a program that can detect images that contain the picture of my dog. I can create a rule-based program that takes new images as inputs, compares the pixels to my original dog image, and responds by saying whether my dog is in those images. Well, this will only work for as long as I provide an exact copy of my original dog image to my program. 
a slightly different picture of my dog will yield a negative answer. For instance, if I take a picture of my dog from a different angle, the program will not be able to detect it successfully. So, using the rules-based system, the solution would be to take pictures of my dog from different angles and create new rules in my program that compare each input against all those images. The problem is that even if I take a million pictures of my dog, it would still be very impossible for me to account for every possible case. Different factors also affect the image such as lighting conditions and the background of the image, and this will cause the program to fail. Now, say that even if I manage to make the program to successfully detect my dog in any given image, but what happens if I want to improve my program that could detect not just my dog, but any other dog? How many rules would I need to create for that? Well, that's hard to imagine. And this is just a sample problem that symbolic AI programs have always struggled with. In the next lesson, you are going to learn a different approach by which machines or computer systems can improve their performance without explicit programming, like an if-then statement used in symbolic AI. Again, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next lesson.